I want to really quick take a look at the patch notes. I'm going into this completely blind. I have not looked at the patch notes yet. So let's do like a blitz, a blitz of the patch notes. Yeah, we present the Escape from Tarkov 14.0 patch notes. There will be a wipe. New content, Ground Zero. We knew about this. This is actually something I'm super excited about, I think, for the first time in a long time. Putting content towards a new player experience. Oh, so they decided 20. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Located in the center of streets of Tarkov. It's been added to the game. Large number of infrastructure facilities in the modern city, banks, cafes, restaurants, stores. Part of streets, we knew that. Tower by the skyscrapers of Tarkov. Center location is the main Russian branch of Terror Group, where the original conflicts began. That's cool. The most violent clash between USEC PMCs and Oman. What the? Took place in the facility's premises. Beginner players level 1 to 20. So you will be, have access to the flea market in this zone. PMCs of 20 plus will not be able to access locations. Scavs will have access to the location at any player level. I'm worried about that. New starter quests have been added to this location. Visual cues for new players have been added to the location. Interesting. Debut checking. Renamed to background check. Shorter supplier. Gunsman part 1. Received updated text descriptions. Okay, so they added new quests to ground zero and redid some of the like brand new some of the like first quests you get access to i'm assuming so that they can be completed here on ground zero okay new boss colin ty uh added streets tarkov he's a former officer of the ministry of internal affairs during his service in law enforcement he had a reputation as a vile man whose behavior was sometimes feared by his co-workers his favorite method of interrogation a rubber baton dude please tell me this man tries to beat us with his rubber baton thanks to physical strength and bold temperament after the events of terror group he formed a gang of course his good relationships with caban are well known so maybe not brother we thought it was his brother but his good relationships with caban are well known he has a small number of guards prefers to stay in one position and occasionally patrols his territory if he feels he has the upper hand he may switch to his police baton yes <laughs> he lives uh in the area around the klimov shopping mall ah okay 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 that's good we needed something to do on that side of the map we needed something to do on that side of the map that's good that's good caban's new guards what boss caban is joined by his closest associates bass match and gus since the time of uh Kaban's active involvement in business, they had severed, they had served as his loyal associates. These two dandies, dandies, like to dress up at Ragman's place and organize legal street races through the streets of Tarkov in tuned cars from Kaban's dealership? What? They prefer unique clothes to their battle gear? Are these guys going to just be like swag, freaking good looking dudes? Has a special fondness for machetes and gus for crowbars dude okay are we just getting like two more mini baddies that are just gonna look fly and beat us to death with machetes and crowbars because if so i'm here for it <gasps> Ooh, okay shoreline rework boys visually reworked most of the landscape keeping the main points of interest attack okay this is what I was wondering. My big question around the shoreline rework, are, are we just getting an expansion? Are we getting an expansion at all? Are we actually, are they gonna redo shoreline in any way? So this, visually reworking most of the landscape, keeping the main points of interest intact. Okay, so we are getting a proper update to this map, which is poggers. Added a new area, a small cattle farm, which is home to smugglers and scavs. Awesome. That sounds sick. Updated the light sources. Please let us shoot out the construction lights in the resort. Please optimize most location. Completely redesign the culling system. W. Uh, they did this for streets and they've been wanting to bring that to other maps. Okay. Reworked the location borders. Okay. Concrete fence replaced by minefield and snipers in most area. Slightly expanded in some areas. Okay. So they've been, they've been doing this recently. They don't like putting hard barriers where you can't go. They just like you exploding or falling over dead when you go somewhere you can't go. Whatever. Uh, rework some of the points of interest, including the addition of new quests and activities in several previously empty zones. Chat, we needed more shoreline quests. You know what I mean? There wasn't enough. There wasn't enough. Some areas have been reworked to improve gameplay. Added a river crossing. Reworked almost all elevations and sniper positions, as well as scav areas of interest. What? Added more than 30 new containers and Jaeger stashes and fixed over 1,200 visual and minor bugs. Bro, Shoreline getting some juice. Dude, uh, that's super exciting. Okay, new weapons, new equipment, new loot. We got the uh, 9A91, 9x39 compact assault rifle uh, and the VSK 9x39 rifle. So these both shoot the valid VSS cartridge. Interesting. I forgot we're getting the Sig Spear in 227 Fury. 
listen, I don't know enough about guns, but that sounds hard. We got the RPD and the RPDN both shooting 762 by 39 and updating the models and animations for the SKS. Oh yeah, we're getting an SKS update. I forgot they showed off some of that. Dude, the Sig Spear, that could be cool. I'm super excited about more 9 by 39 stuff. Super excited about that. Okay, changes and new mechanics, boys. This is where a lot of the juice is gonna be. The achievement system, I'm super excited about this. Players will receive achievements upon completing various objectives. Earned achievements will not be lost with the wipes. They will not wipe your achievements. You can view earned achievements in the achievements tab. There's a hall of fame that's been added to the game. This zone serves as a place where you can display mementos for displaying the dog tags of players of the opposite faction killed by your PMC. You get a bonus, whoa, to combat skills leveling. So if you put dog tags of the opposite faction in your hall of fame, you get like a hideout bonus to combat skill leveling. The higher the level of the eliminated player, the greater the skill bonus. That is fascinating. You can add items to your favorites, such as such items will be displayed on your profile. Okay, interesting. The new hitbox and armor system. I'm nervous about this. Updated hitboxes. The head is divided into separate simple hitbox zones, which coincide with the protection zones of the helmet and the masks. Three hit zones have been added to the head area. Front, neck, throat, back, neck. Oh, it's front, neck, throat, like head, comma, eyes. Back, neck, neck, and face face collider. Thorax and stomach hit zones have been decided into front, back, and sides. The pelvic hit zone is decided into front groin, back buttocks. Oh god. Cause damage to the stomach zone. I guess that kind of makes sense, right? Like your thorax has front, back, side, and side, but they all just do damage to your thorax. Whatever. Forearm hit zones have been added. Oh, forearm hit zones have been reduced in diameter. This is something when you're shooting and when someone's shooting at you, everyone's just hitting each other in the arms. And this has been quite annoying. So that's super exciting. The death screen now shows more detailed information about the area that was fatally wounded. For example, thorax, comma, upper back. I would like more information about like more and more detailed information about like what calibers we were shot with and where like sometimes that information can get confusing and hard to read but this this is good okay okay so armor 37 ballistic plates have been added to the game seven for chest six for the rear 20 universal plates for chest and rear sections and four for the side sections ballistic plates have their own parameters specific to armor so strength, material, armor damage, absorption, ricochet, parameters, all the normal stuff. Ballistic plates are divided into different formats depending on the size and the format of the armor selection. Ballistic plates cannot be inserted or removed while wearing the body armor. It must be removed first. So this kind of makes me think that it can be done in raid. You just have to take it off. Interesting. The visual appearance uh, depends on its durability. Ballistic plates can spawn in appropriate areas and in containers and locations. Okay. Are affected by the light armor and heavy armor skills depending on the type of ballistic plate. Added separate ballistic plate zones on character visually matching the location of the body armor. The hit registration zones of ballistic plates of the same format have the same position in all body armor and plate carriers with the slots for this plate format. The dimensions of the ballistic plate zones zones are the same as the average dimension of real ballistic plates of that format. Is this basically them trying to say that like, hey, different armors look different in Tarkov, but we've standardized the size of the plates. So there's not just going to be like a meta plate carrier or whatever, I, I guess. Body armor protection is no longer uniform. It now depends on what areas of the body armor visually protects. For example, no body armor protects the armpit area. Buckshot boys, aim for the armpits. Uh, integrated armor slots have been added to a large number of helmets. Yep, helmet durability has con converted to the integration of armor. So yeah, this is like, this is a lot and this is getting pretty dense. But what they're telling us is that they're moving all of the attributes of protection and armor away from helmets into the plates you put in the helmets, away from the vests into the plates that you put into the vests. The inspection window, you can now see exactly what areas of the vest or helmet are protected and what the durability rating is. This is because it's going to get very confusing if you have 18 different plates in a single armor. You need to be able to see which ones are damaged. So that was a lot of stuff talking about how they added plates. I mean, I guess I'd, I'd rather these patch notes be too detailed than not detailed enough, right? They really are 
trying to hammer home that they spent a lot of time working on this. Obviously, we'll see how she goes. It's the balancing. One, one thing in balancing. The damage parameter on various armor materials has been adjusted to reflect the new durability values. I'm interested, chat. What do you guys think? Do you think this increases the time to kill or decreases the time to kill? I think as complicated as it is, it could have the chance to increase the time to kill because like a real simple TLDR is if you get shot in the back, your back armor gets crushed. But if you turn around to then fight that opponent, all of the armor that faces your opponent is now is still full, right? It could theoretically increase the time to kill, which could be good. They made some changes to repairs. When repairing a body armor, the durability is, distri is distributed according to the following pr priorities. Ballistic plates and then integrated armor. You can repair ballistic plates as separate items. When repairing helmets, durability is distributed according to the following priorities. Integrated armor, face top, integrated armor can receive an enhancement when it's replaced. Okay. I'm assuming so can plates. Uh, chances for armor to receive common and rare enhancements while being repaired have been increased. Okay. The flea market ban has been removed from a large number of body armors. Ballistic plates of five and... Six cannot be sold on the market. Ballistic plays. Oh, th okay. This makes sense. This, this makes sense. Because so many of the armors that were banned on the flea are now essentially just plate carriers that offer little to no protection by themselves. The ban of them on the flea has been lifted. So you you'll be able to buy a gen four if, if it's got no plates. Maybe. I don't know. I just made that up. The ballistic plates of class five and six cannot be sold on the market. So they're still attempting to curb the flea market selling of class five and six armors, but they need needed to change that because a lot of the armors are now just plate carriers and not armors. That's how I read that. Maybe I'm stupid. Uh, and then they added ballistic plates to the inventory of the traders. That's a lot, chat. That's a lot on the armor hitboxes. We'll see, we'll see. God damn, these patch notes are crazy. All right, let's keep going. This video is going to be an hour long. Vaulting and obstacle interaction. I'm so excited about this. Obstacle vaulting has been added to the game. There are two types of vaulting. Climbing the obstacle and remaining on it. For example, climbing onto a crate to fire at the enemy from on top of that crate. Vaulting over an obstacle. For example, jumping over a small fence to take a shortcut. Nikita knew I was reading this because all them small fences on streets. Each of these types have different animation for different heights different parameters of stamina and arm stamina consumption, different action speeds depending on the negative effects. That's interesting that they're treating them so separate, but I, I think that could be a good thing. During a sprint, you can jump over obstacles without the goal of climbing them or vaulting them, so you can still jump. If vaulting is performed while walking, the loudness of such actions will be noticeably lower than jumping and sprinting. For the convenience of overcoming obstacles, for the convenience of overcoming obstacles as an option, an option has been added to the game. Vault over medium obstacles where you can choose auto or hotkey. If you select auto, your character will climb over a medium to low height obstacle by themselves. If you select hotkey, you will need to press the jump key to initiate vaulting. But this way you can control the character's actions more precisely. Can we set this hotkey to whatever we want? This is important. But you can have it automatically do it or you can have it not automatically do it. I feel like the game not automatically doing it is probably the play, but we'll see. The character now stops if he hits a wall while walking or sprinting. Oh yeah, this this used to be the meta. You could sprint right into the wall and uh, just forever. So the, your character is going to stop. That's That's interesting. Okay, vaulting. Very excited about this. Very excited about this. Please, please, please be good. Shoulder transition. The ability to move firearms from the right shoulder to the left shoulder and back has been added to the game. This can be useful when you want to fire from the left side while behind cover. The shoulder transition is available during walking, crouching, leaning, and other actions. The shoulder transition is not available while prone and overhead and side blind firing. That makes sense. Positioning the weapon on the left shoulder imposes a penalty. The weapon has an additional sway when moving. This makes sense. I'm worried that they're going to overtune this, but this makes sense, right? Because like it, it would, it, you're not transitioning your hands. You're literally just pulling it over here. So that would be a little bit more uncomfortable. I'm worried they're going to overtune that, but we'll see. Added a shoulder transition, uh, default to mouse four. Added vaulting action. Default key is space. Okay, so you can change the vaulting key, which is good, which is good. The jump action has been reassigned to spacebar key with release press type. Oh, okay, so like vaulting is on continuous and jump is on release. Okay, but you can change these things. That's fine. Uh, preset ammo loading. You can now save setting presets for loading ammunition into magazine uh, sequentially, as well as quickly load magazines using these presets. Players can name each preset, select appropriate loading preset, view its contents, compare it to other loading magazines. 
Uh, the magazine preset has been divided into three blocks. Top, how many and which cartridges will be at the top of a magazine, i.e. which cartridges will be first. Loop, how many and which cartridges will be cycled into the magazine belt. And bottom, how many and which cartridges will be at the bottom of the magazine belt, which cartridges will be last. So you can create up to 30 unique presets uh, with five presets per caliber. Hey, this is kind of cool. This is one of those things where I don't know that I'll use it, but why not have it in the game, right? I think that's cool. New recoil, boys. The recoil mechanic has been improved to make it more realistic and comfortable for players. A special emphasis has been placed on improving the feel of semi-auto and short burst shooting. Ooh. New recoil now includes a variety of flexible settings, allowing for uh, balance adjustments based on analytical data and player feedback. All weapon recoil parameters have been rebalanced. Okay, so this is good that they say that basically if they redid the system, they redid it in such a way that allows for balance adjustments easier. Because part of the, the old system was that it was a pain to balance. You basically had to balance entire types of guns. It was hard for them to balance one specific gun. It got weird. And when they did balance it, they were only balancing parameters that the player didn't see. And it was weird. So this is interesting. Can it get much worse than what we have? I guess it could. I don't know. I hope I hope it's good. I hope that semi-auto and short bursting is, is more viable than full autoing. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Let's fly through the, the last of these. Lightkeeper services. Um, <clears throat> after completing Lightkeeper quests, you'll be able to unlock access to the following services. The Sacred Amulet service. Lightkeeper gives the character a sacred amulet, and while the character is wearing the amulet, all cultists on all locations do not attack you unless provoked. Dude, tell me, like, these things, you're, when you die, you're gonna lose these things. It's gonna be super lame. Rogue support. When a player purchases this service, in that raid, rogues will not attack the player. Uh, who ordered the service regardless of their faction. In addition, rogues will provide fire support by attacking the target that the player who purchased the service has directed their attention to. Oh my god, is this gonna work? Uh, Zarachi support. When a player buys this service in that raid, Zarachi will support the player finding the target that the player is attacking. It's saying in that raid though. So do all these things just happen on Lighthouse? I guess the sacred amulet, you can go anywhere. But like, do these two things only happen on Lighthouse? I guess. I feel like this, nobody's going to use this. I feel like this is kind of a novelty. Uh, weapon rack. Now you can add the displayed weapon to your favorites. These weapons will be displayed in your profile. They showed us that. They showed us the viewable profiles. <laughs> yep. You can see other players, uh, statistics, achievements, favorite weapons. Yep, 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 yep. Adjusted the peaceful and combat behavior of AI when moving from one area to another within the location. That is got to be the like most underwhelming AI change. Adjusted the peaceful and combat behavior of AI when moving one from one area location to the other. Okay. Uh, balancing changes to trading. The change the trader prices and availability of ammunition of the following caliber. Change the trader prices and availability of ammunition ammunition i can speak in the following calibers all of them uh lapua 366 545 556 300 blackout 9 by 39 762 72 by 51 72 by 54 r 9 by 18 9 by 19 they're all of them okay they changed the trading prices and availability of all the ammo changed the trader prices and availability of armors that makes sense adjusted the various trade offers and barter of weapon attachments okay so freaking dude everything we know about like barters and stuff i feel like is gonna be change balancing it changes to quests <laughs> expanded the quest rewards you will now be remore, rewarded more often with unlocking previously unavailable offers barters ammo okay so maybe they pulled a lot of some of these ammos off and then put them behind quests change the order of skier quests between friend from the west part two and setup the new order is friend from the west part two then setup then inform means arm then chumming then bullshit then silent caliber Yes, dude, we get set up so much earlier. This has been my feedback for, I don't know, five years. That's a W. Change the quest objectives for Punisher Part 2, Punisher Part 4, and Tarkov Shooter Part 4. Fascinating. Balance changes to crafting. Adjusted the armor crafts. Now to make armor vests, you need to find a set of fabrics and a ballistic plate. Okay. Uh, reduce production time and cost of cheap ammunition. Okay. Oh, chat. This tiny little thing the damage and armor penetration parameters of different caliber ammunition have been revised and adjusted so few words can say so much this could be a, this could be the best thing ever or this could be pain and suffering okay uh balance changes to muzzle devices the muzzle devices have been rebalanced suppressors muzzle adapters flash hiders and compensators 
Dude! This could be cool if maybe suppressors didn't give the best recoil, the least amount of sound, the, the no flash. If suppressors weren't just like god mode. Like if muzzle adapters have better recoil than suppressors, but suppressors are quieter. So it's like, which one do you want to use? Fascinating. I don't think this is going to be the suppressor durability that they've talked about adding, but this is still super fascinating. The BTR is on streets. The BTR has been added to streets of Tarkov, traveling between different stops and points of the city. Uh, the BTR offers three services. I'm so excited about this. The taxi service, uh, players can travel to any available point in the city in total safety. This could be interesting for like if you're doing quests or something. Move items to stash service. The player can send items to the stash with the found in raid status. This is only available for PMCs. Chat, we are legitimately going to have a dead drop on streets of Tarkov. If you can find the BTR, you can send stuff to your stash with found in raid and stay in the raid. This is the biggest thing ever, dude. The player can order covering fire with the BTR weaponry, which provides the safest possible drop off at the stopping point. The service is available after purchasing the taxi service and it's only available for PMCs. Dude. Oh my God. That could be huge. Okay. Points. Uh, where is it going to stop? The hotel, the cinema, the crane, the apartment comp, cardinal apartments, the tram, and the city center. Interesting, because these are these are good, because that's close to extracts, right? Like if you're on, if you're at the mall and you found a quest item and you want to get to the crane, the BTR is neutral to all players unless a player starts attacking it first. If someone purchases covering fire, the BTR becomes hostile. When the service ends, the BTR becomes neutral again. The cost of the service depends on the faction, charisma level, and travel distance. Yo, who's going to have it cheaper? They literally say except for scavs. Only for PMCs, only for PMCs. Oh, you can travel though. Scavs can travel. That's crazy. Okay, so as a scav, you can pay for it to travel around the map. But it's the uh, it's these two that are only for PMCs. That's fascinating. Uh, charisma skill level and travel distance. I mean, you can only carry like 200,000 rubles on you. So it's going to be like 30,000 rubles, right? Fascinating. Oh. <laughs> The visual effect of the painkillers has been changed. Last time they said this, they made it worse though. So please, well, oh, please God. The door to the expanded part of the hideout is now always open after construction. Did we expand the hideout again? Change the camera system of the hideout from rail to free cam. Oh, cool. Okay, free cam in the hideout. That's dope. I guess the weightlifting is not... But what the door was also the door was always open after construction, wasn't it? Or are they talking about not needing to smash it down? I don't know. That's little. Okay, list of changes. Uh, streets and shoreline spawn of random players, uh, led to the lack of damage registration from melee weapons, incorrect behavior of roads in the hangar building on lighthouse, hideout stuff, compatibility issues, fix the ability to hear outdoor sounds while inside on the bunker on reserve. Yeah. LOL. Wow. This is a lot. You can see gear on death screen. Uh, what were the standouts? <laughs> Capon's new guards. That's going to be funny. Shoreline rework is a lot more than I thought it would be. That's exciting. Here's the thing, chat. They didn't at all talk about, they didn't at all talk about like opening up that port or, and they didn't also at all talk about adding a new faction. The shoreline rework, I'm, I'm super excited about what we're getting here, but I don't think we're getting that extra faction. The fact that they reduced the forearm hitbox is good. The armor system is very in depth. What else? The new recoil, obviously. They changed the painkillers. They made some quest changes that are W's. Very interested about the damage and armor uh, parameter changes. Being able to, a having a dead drop is going to be, I'm so excited about that. Wow. Big patch, big patch. Let's see how it is. Let's see how she goes.